Adele Trap don't even do stuff that just makes you cheer because you're a football fan. It makes you laugh at the pure outrageousness of what he's just done. Quality's still there. There's no doubt about that. We live in an age when football from around the world is instantly accessible. There's more of it on TV than ever before, and if we're not watching it, we're probably talking about it or consuming content around the game. So it can be tempting to feel like we've pretty much seen all football's got to offer, with highlights available in seconds and a whole inventory of FIFA tricks memorised. Not that we don't love it, of course. But every so often, players come along, completely stopping you in your tracks, making you think, fuck, players like a Delta Rapt. Now, most of us will be familiar with his career arc. Spurs prodigy kicked out of North London by Redknapp, QPR icon eventually kicked out of West London by Redknapp, a few exhilarating performances at Milan and Genoa, five-year deal at Benfica, slipped into their B team, presumably never to be seen again. Adel Zerat is the best player I've ever seen in a QPR shirt and probably the best player I ever will see in a QPR shirt. He is a one-off genius and Everyone at Loftus Road absolutely loves him. He came in and completely revolutionised us from a mid-table championship team with Neil Warnock's help to getting 19 goals and 21 assists in a season as we won a championship, went back to the Premier League for the first time in 15 years. We expected him to go on and do big things and it looked like he would for a while. He was linked to PSG, he went to AC Milan and briefly lit up Serie A and we all thought that he was going to show the world his true potential there. And then things just seemed to trail off. But then came a comeback nobody could have predicted. The ultimate street baller, arch nutmeg merchant and piss taker par excellence converted into a defensive midfielder? It might sound crazy, but it's true. I think if you hadn't seen Adel Tarrapt for, for a while, if you'd only you'd lost track of him when he left England, I think you would be amazed at how selfless he is. But the fact that he can win tackles and then dribble around a couple of players in the centre of the pitch rather than be wanting to be do, doing roulettes on people outside the penalty box. It's an enormous difference. Improbably, after only making his debut for Benfica almost four years after joining, Tarat, now 30, has adapted, dropping into a deeper role and becoming a key part of their domestic and European ambitions. Now just to be clear, he's obviously not turned into a proper clogger, hatchet man, shithouse of a CDM. Nobody would want to see that. But he is getting stuck in, running games from the middle of the park, dictating from deep and covering the ground as a box-to-box -box midfielder. When coach Bruno Lage moved from Benfica B to the top job, he took to rap with him, giving him a handful of appearances at the back end of the 18-19 season as Benfica edged out Porto for the title. I think the faith that Bruno Lage had in him in the first place can't be underestimated because without that, and it was a surprise when he even said out loud in public that Tarapt has got a chance of getting in my squad. People were like, really? Has he? You know, they'd almost, some of them had forgotten he was there, I think, some of the, some of the supporters and, and, and some of the media too. But Lage has been fair because he said from the start, you've got an opportunity for me, but he's also said, you're at the service of the team, which is a huge departure. And now, I think for the first time, it feels as if it's not all about him. He's not really a highlight reel player anymore, actually, which I think is quite interesting evolution of, of, of his career. Lifting his first silverware since the championship with QPR almost 10 years previously, perhaps something clicked, but whatever happened, he hasn't looked back since. The question on most people's lips then has surely got to be, is it for real this time? We've seen impressive bursts of form before at Genoa and Milan, before a falling out, weight gain or spell completely out of the picture. Whether Tarapt really has changed and settled down at Benfica remains to be seen, but as easy as it might be to criticise him for how his career's turned out, what would be the point? Let's say a hypothetical Adel Tarapt got his head down, went about leaving QPR in the right way, moved to PSG for 20 million, making 300 appearances before a move to Everton and won an FA Cup. No drama, no fuss, just a solid career with a decent trophy haul. It just wouldn't be very Adele to rapt, would it? Because while it's the ability on the pitch that first wowed us, it's the man off it that continues to fascinate us. At the moment, it looks like being a case of better late than never, but the beauty of to rapt is we've never known what was coming next. We'd say never change Adele, but we know you'll always be a flawed genius the streets won't forget.